What's up YouTube, Dale here from Zephyr, and today I'm gonna to bring you an update to Red Dragon Archfiend. So massive shout out to Joe who's shown me an update to this particular build and an update combo that I'll show you at the end of the video as well. It does involve the brand new card, the Red Lotus King Flame Crime, uh, which actually will be utilized in the combo as well, so I'll show you exactly how this can be utilized in the deck. You can also use the Star Dragon that also came out in Battles of Legend. I currently don't own a copy, so I haven't gone around that particular build. I've just updated my previous version version I did back in, I think it was March, it was a couple of months ago. So with all of that out of the way, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss out any more upcoming content. With that out of the way, I'm going to dive headfirst into the profile, show you what we've got and explain why we've got it. So you start off with your main ideal starter of the deck being your soul resonator, which is why you're going to want to max this out at free. Now, most of this is going to be pretty standard for most of the lineup anyway. I've kind of adapted a couple of spaces of the deck to get some other cards into it. This does still involve the Dragoonity engine, as I do feel that it's the best kind of engine that will bait out so many hand traps from your opponent, as well as setting you up with a nice little board protection. Then, of course, we also play two Vision Resonator. You can place it free if you want to. This is currently a 42 card build. I'm just debating on what cards I'd want to cut from it. Uh, once I've kind of figured that out, then obviously I can start adapting around to play free Vision Resonator if I wanted to. We've got the one Synchron Resonator and the one Crimson Resonator, obviously bouncing back and forth for the amount of numbers that you choose to play with these ones. You'd usually play more Crimson Resonator if you want to be going down more of a centered line focus build. Um, but ideally, what I'm using is I'm using the Beastials as my hand traps, as well as my extenders, so you can utilize those into a different way and then with the um with the Dragoonity package, if you want to use hand traps instead then of course you just take them out straight away you can go in hand traps and cross outs if you choose to go so. Uh, then obviously gone, gone with two Earthbound Prisoner Stonewalkers. The reason for this card is so good is it allows you to discard it to add a level three or lower theme tuner from the deck to the hand. So it lets you get into your Soul Resonator, you can go into a Synchron Resonator. Um, it basically acts as another form of, and I'll skip ahead to it as well, being the Resonator Call. Now this is actually mentioned to me in my previous video. Now let me make sure I get the credit correct. Um, it was Shudderbugjion. God, I love that name. Uh, replace Resonator Call with Sweeper to make the Beastials live. Now, I wouldn't replace Direct Light for like, but with the Earthbound Sweeper, I could see myself cutting Resonator Call down. The reason you still play free Resonator Call is technically it's not hard once per turn, it's not even a soft once per turn, so as many of these cards that you can get access to, you can play, whereas the Stone Sweeper is. That being said, Stone Sweeper making sure that the Beastials are live is actually really, really kind of cool, because it acts as a Resonator Call, but with that little extra step. So if I've opened up a Beastial, straight away my Beastials are live without me needing to discard anything else or lose any of my Beastials like Lubellion or anything else. So arguably if you want to get it down to a 40 card, uh, 41 card straight away, you take out a Resonator Call, uh, and then you probably mess around with the ratios yourself until they fit you, your, your personal play style. Uh, for the non-tuners, of course, we have got Triple Bone Archfiend, uh, another one that I've kind of skipped over as a tuner is the One Assault Synchron. Arguably, because it's only at one, you can cut it out completely. But I do like the idea of this become technically a free seven for 700 life points, and then being able to sync that with a Lubellion to get you into a Dispatter can be massively helpful. Then, of course, we've got the one brand new Red Lotus King Flame Crime. So during the main phase, if you control a Fiend Tuner or your opponent controls a Special Summon monster, you get a quick effect to Special Summon this card from the hand. If it's Special Summoned, you can inflict 400 damage to your opponent for each Fire monster you control with different names, so it will include itself. And of course, if you do have a Soul Resonator, you're going to technically cowboy your opponent. Turn zero. Very, very funny. Uh, and then, of course, on top of that, if it wasn't enough, uh, if this card is sent to the graveyard for Synchro Material, which it will do, you get to send a normal trap from the deck to the graveyard. You can only use each effect once per turn. Now, the reason that that is so good is it lets you send a card like Red Rain from the deck to the graveyard, and you'll see that in the combo. Red Rain is actually one of my most favorite trap cards for this particular type of deck, or just Synchro decks in general, because it's if you control a level eight or higher Synchro monster, you get to banish all monsters on the field, except the monsters with the highest level. Also, the remaining face-up monsters on the field are unaffected by other card effects except their own until the end of this turn. If a Dark Dragon Synchro monster is Synchro summoned to your field while this card is in the graveyard, you get to add this card to the hand. So obviously the idea is you're going to use this to send it to the graveyard, then you will Synchro into a Dark Dragon to add this back to the hand, and then you're good to rock and roll with that one as well. So it's a really kind of cool card that lets you banish the board, and you're only going to end your board on like three level 10s or two level 10s and an 8, so you don't really care about losing your own level 8 as long as you've got those two 10s on the board. Then of course got the one Uverloop, the one Wild Wind, and the one Catalyzer. Now arguably, I don't think you need all four of these, so I would probably look like I'd be cutting King Wild Wind the most. So straight away, this and a Resonator Call coming out puts you, uh, puts you onto a 40 card deck. Uverloop is probably the best one to go for, and I personally just like Catalyzer, but if you wanted to choose Wild Wind or Catalyzer, entirely up to you. 
Uh, and then for the Beastials, of course, Triple Lubellion, no, pretty standard on that one. One Saraneer, one Druid Swell, and one Magnemute. Uh, and then we are, of course, playing the one Regained. You can play the Trap card if you want to, and in doing so, you just add to your end board, because the idea is at the end of this end board, you're gonna end up with a Red Dragon Archfiend Trap card, whether it be Red Zone or whether it be um, Red Screen but you'll also end up with red range. You'll end up with two of these in a combination, and then if you're gonna add the Beastial track card as well, you're gonna end up with three track cards on the board, and it does give you a very nice kind of control option. For the Dragoonity package, which like I said, can very easily be cut out for more hand traps, you've got the three Remus, uh, the one Baby Rock, the one at Legatus, and then of course you do play the one Ravine. So straight away this is like six cards, but the way I looked at it is if I wanted to turn these into hand traps, it's only gonna be Imperms or Ashes, and if I do that, I don't have space for crossouts, whereas I'd much rather play an engine like this with a bit of risk but a lot of reward, where I can ditch the Remus, get into a Crystal Wing without using up my normal summon, baiting out loads of hand traps along the way, setting up cards in my graveyard that I might want there, and then being able to end, um, produce a bit more of a stronger end board. Then for the spell cards, of course, Triple Crimson Gryer, my days, please can we have this as a foil at some point. Uh, two Pot of Prosperity, one Call by the Grave, pretty standard on that one. Uh, red Screen, Red Rain, and Red Zone. Now you don't need to play all three of these if you want to. I personally still really like Red Screen because not a lot of people know what it is. They don't know how it works or anything like that. So your opponent's monsters cannot declare an attacks. And then during each of your end phases, you pay a thousand life points. It is not optional or it is destroyed. You get to target a one level one tuna monster in your graveyard. Destroy this card. And if you do, special summon that target. Uh, Red Dragon Archfiend must be on the field to activate and resolve that effect to revive, not the effect to activate in general. But the idea is that these are your two more generic main ones and this so this is something you could probably side out in uh, in and out if you wanted to it really is up to you so that's it for the entire main deck i'm now going to show you the extra deck and then obviously at the end of the video i'll show you the combo that involves the new crime card so for the extra deck again you've got flexibility on this one but we're playing triple red rising so you've got that option to go down the red rising combo route if you want to uh, but of course you can just go down the normal route anyway or the dragoonity route uh, the Cooley Belt, just a level set dragon that gives you the ability to discard and pop. Scarlight, Red Dragon Archery, burn for time if you need to, like you're already doing a cowboy, why not go a little bit more? Two Red Dragon Archfiends, follow up by the one Scarred Dragon Archfiend. Uh, one Abyss, one Chaos Angel. Uh, two Dispatter, I would highly advise you playing two. Honestly, like I said in my previous profile, I had a second one, I highly expect it to be reprinted, which is why I got rid of it, and I expect it to be reprinted in a higher rarity. So I was like, you know what, at the price that people were trying to like get it for, I was like, you know what, I'll get rid of my second. So in its place right now, I'm playing the Corrupted Neversoul, but honestly, this would be a second Dispatter. Uh, and then of course, you've got the one Bane, and then for your Dragoonity options, you've got your one Crystal Wing and your one Gay Dirge. Obviously the idea is that Dirge will lead you into Crystal Wing, and that's how you're gonna be able to get you a Crystal Wing before getting into your five summons, or bait out to get to five summons. So they need to nib you early, otherwise everything else you do from that point on will be protected. And that's the one thing that we kind of lost when we didn't have Baron. So I feel that Crystal Wing is a very nice substitute in order to get you where you need to go. So that's it for the entire main deck and the extra deck. I'm now gonna show you a very cool two card combo that utilizes the brand new card and sets you up with a very nice defensive board. So massive shout out to Joe on this one again. So it's a really kind of cool two card combo that revi uh, requires you to have Crimson Guy and then either Bone Archfiend or Hard Open in the Red Lotus. We'll Hard Open the uh, Bone Archfiend just so you can kind of see what, um, like, you got more chance of opening up Bone Archfiend. Keep in mind as well, you've got three blank cards here, so these could be anything, hand traps or anything else, but they're not relevant to the entire combo. You don't need to discard, so we'll just go with the two. So you're gonna activate the Crimson guy. The Crimson guy is gonna allow you to add your Soul Resonator. You'll normal summon down the Soul Resonator, and then this one on normal lets you add a level four or lower Fiend from the deck to the hand, so you're gonna add down the Red Lotus King. You will then summon down Bone Archfiend by getting rid of your Crimson Gaia, and then this is gonna give you the ability to synchro these two together because you're gonna use this effect to ditch the Crimson Resonator, drop its level by one, synchro these two together, and go into Red Rising. Red Rising's effect will trigger, and this will allow you to bring back your Crimson Resonator. Crimson Resonator's effect will trigger, allowing you to get Vision Resonator and a second Soul Resonator. Now at this point what you wanna do is you wanna special summon down your Flame Crime. This will then burn your opponent for 800 because you've got two fires with different names. You're gonna synchro these two together and this is gonna let you get into a second Red Rising. You will now trigger the Red Lotus effect to send your Red Rain as well as using the Red Rising effect because it's not hard once per turn and as long as this is the last thing to happen, so you do a Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, this will then trigger to allow you to target a Resonator monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So you're gonna bring back the Soul Resonator because you're gonna want it as a level three tuner. So this is what your board is currently looking like, very good success, and this is in the graveyard. You're then going to synchro a Soul Resonator plus your uh, Red Resonator, and this is going to allow you to get into your Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss, which will trigger the Red Rain Graveyard effect to set this on the board. 
You're then going to be able to use the ability to synchro a Vision Resonator with your second Crimson Resonator to get you into Scarred, and this will then trigger the ability of your Vision Resonator to allow you to add and set the red zones. You've got two track cards involved. This can very easily be red screen if you wanted to instead. And then what you're going to do is you're going to synchro your Crimson Resonator plus your Scarred and get you into a Dispatter. And in doing so, this will then allow you to trigger the Scarred effect to summon you out a Red Dragon Archfiend. So as this currently stands, of course, you've got a 10, a 9, and an 8. So you do need to be a little bit careful on the rain, because the rain will technically nuke everything apart from this batter. But the idea is you're also going to have Red Zone that will allow you to float back. During the end phase, when Red Dragon Archfiend tries to trigger to nuke your own board, you'll banish the Soul Resonator so that it doesn't get destroyed. And then you're still ending your board on this plus those three additional cards. So if any of these cards will lead you to a Banish, then your Dispatter will be automatically live. Then you've also got loads of other options that you can kind of play around with as well. So that's it for the entire profile, and of course this very tidy two car combo as well. Um, it's something that's a little bit different, just gives you a different kind of outcome. If you want to go a bit more trap defensive, then you do have that option available to you as well. Uh, like I said, if you open up the Remus on this one and you feel that you want to be playing around the Nibiru, then of course you can go down that route, and that will also set you up a card that will be banished so that your um, Beastial Dispatter is also going to be live as well. Anyway, like I said at the start of the video, a massive shout out to Joe, who always brings me the spice when it comes to Red Dragon Archfiend, which is always going to be cool. Uh, and I really do see that you guys enjoy the Red Dragon Archfiend content as well, as much as I do. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Till next time, as absolutely always, stay safe, and of course, happy dueling.